Hey everybody, Brad Linder back at you for Oogie Boogie from the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. It's going to be uh, interesting to say the least. going to share this over with the page so we can uh, let everybody see it. Share it, we can't see. So uh, anyway, <laughs> all joking aside, <clears throat> there we go. Damien, Manuel, thanks for popping on. I'm about to get right to this right now so we can see what's going on here. I love these movies for one thing. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about drawing them sooner. It's just the Christmas spirit, you know, kind of thing kicked in. I was watching It's a Wonderful Life for the first time of the year last night, and uh, it happened to kick on, and I was just like, yeah, it's time. So looking at the... Uh, the old Blu-ray and DVD collection, I was just like, yeah, I, I must uh, insist on watching this at least once. That's my main source of entertainment. I, I like to stream stuff, but I like to have I like to have DVDs as well so it doesn't eat up my bandwidth because I do so much media stuff. You know, um, it's hard for me to do that because I eat up my, my bandwidth package in my office. So... I try not to do that too much, and I have, you know, hard copies of things around um, a lot of the time. But so I don't wear them out, I leave the originals safe at home and just tend to burn them to jumps or whatever so that I can use them that way. Very portable, and if anything happens, that way it's protected. Um, you know, that kind of thing. But... Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite holiday movies since it came out in, um, you know, back in the days when we were still riding dinosaurs, uh, back in 1993, way back. So uh, <laughs> I was talking with someone right before, right before the show with that, and it's just, man, you know, I'm not old by any means. It's just uh, one of those things when you think about something being 20 or 30 years old. Plus, you start to uh, get that attention span focused on the old, uh, the old clock. And um, way more upbeat than I was yesterday. Uh, got some rest, much needed, and got some things going on and put um, over a hundred new content videos on the old YouTube channel today, uh, as well as continue to load content into the new blog, which comes out this week, um, that is not just going to be comic book content. Uh, it, it's going to be multiple platform content that goes across the board. Uh, if you're looking for comic stuff, you can check out Comic Kickstarter. Uh, that That's where that most of that will be. Those resources will be available. And... Uh, Got a few properties going live. It's going to be heavy duty. And, uh, you know, everybody asked me, it's like, man, you were a little down yesterday. No, 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 no. I wasn't down. It was just I was really tired. <laughs> I was really tired. And when I get that way, I tend to be a little more quiet and not as outspoken. But, uh, yeah, I I still enjoy this. I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't changed anything other than the fact that I'm going to be putting out um, a lot more. Um, got some news coming up on some product stuff for you guys pretty quick because I just got hired in to do, um, I know I said I wasn't going to do much freelance stuff, but I couldn't pass it up due to the fact of how I was requested to do it and, uh, you know, the deal that I was brought in on. So, I've got a couple of um, card sets that I'm going to be working on. As you guys know, I'm working on the Cherry set already from the uh, Cherry comic book. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a few cards in that. And then I've got a massive, massive set, which I'm going to be telling you guys about once the contract's official in my hand um, this week. I was told it would be mailed out this afternoon uh, via the airport. So we'll see how that goes. And if they mail it out and uh, the job does hold up, I just got signed to do 
four major card sets, and I'm going to be doing those in a couple of days' time um, once I get them, and I'll let you guys know what sets get approved and what uh, is available. I've already been asked privately for a couple of the, uh, of course, I'm not telling the name of the set yet, but um, I've had a few fans tell me, you know, that they, they want the cards no matter what. They want to buy proofs from me because I've got a few proofs coming in from each one, and I found that pretty cool. Uh, I didn't intend to sell them. I was just talking about the set. <laughs> and um, they happen to be card guys as well, so they were all about it. And I was just like, well, you know, if, if you want to pay for them, go ahead. You know, and they asked me a price point and whatnot, and I was like, not the three or $400 that they're going for on eBay, for sure. They will be way more efficient and uh, practical on pricing. But let's see what gets approved first. So, But I'm excited to be able to tell you guys about the contract nonetheless because those cards are going to be awesome. They are going to be a blast. Uh, and that particular series is way up the food chain. Um, yeah, the first one, the primary one is, and I'm really, really honored to be a part of it. But uh, since the people that direct that Get, found me and gave me the project through this show. I'm going to shut up now so that I don't hang <laughs> myself. <laughs> uh, I haven't signed an NDA or anything like that, but you know the honor system's there. Um, they refer you not to say anything publicly about which series or what cards you're doing until uh, closer to the project, of course, and I don't want to throw that under the bus and ruin it for myself because that's a big deal for me. Um, because I'm not normally a card guy, even though I draw one every day. I'm not really a card drawing guy, you know, uh, more comic art. And, uh, it cracks me up to no end the way that they came at me for it. So I had to take this project. It, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, those guys are awesome, and uh, they, they're they going to take care of it really well. So so I'm all excited about that. Um, I wish I could say more, but I don't want to, you know, I'm speaking a little early on it as, as we speak right now, so I don't want to go into it too much more. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a blast, and I will make some of those, some of those available for you guys. Uh, to get it if that's what you want to do. I didn't realize I had such a, a heavy fan base for this stuff, and I do appreciate that so much, and I'm not going to let it go to my head or anything crazy like that. I just appreciate it. But um, it's definitely a blast. And I'm all excited because it's Sunday, and we have reached the 90-minute mid-season finale of... Uh, the Walking Dead, that's going to be pretty intense. And they're saying uh, on AMC right now, they've they've allowed some of that footage to get out, and they've been promoting, promoting it all day with the backup replays and stuff. And they've mentioned someone major may be passing away today uh, off that series, which I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, as you guys know, I've been a follower of that series for a long time, long, long time. Before the you know before the show, there was the comic book, and I was a hardcore fan of the book before the show came along. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be awesome. I am excited about that kicking up. So we're going to see what's going on. Now you know, as far as let's get into the topic of nightmare for a minute. You know, something funny about that was the fact that I didn't realize that he was a potato sack. I went into to a couple of descriptions and this, that, and the other, and found out that he is a burlap sack. He was neon green in the movie, and I did not see that as a burlap sack. <laughs> I did not see that coming at all. And um, I thought that was pretty funny, actually, in the way they played that. But, uh, you know, because he was the guy that took down Santa. And that was the reason that Jack Skeleton and 
all the other cast had to come in and save Santa Claus. And they had to save Christmas because he was kidnapped by this knucklehead and uh, his little minions. Get in all these little creepy snakes here. But uh, yeah, he was he was the original boogeyman, and uh, hence the name Oogie Boogie. But uh, yeah, I found it fascinating that he was supposed to be a potato sack come to life as the demon of uh, nightmares, aka the boogeyman. And he's supposed to be full of snakes and you know, nastiness and whatnot, so I am putting in these little, these baby snakes, as it were. I'm not going to put a massive, you know, um, reptile coming out of him or anything weird like that. I'm just making it, like you see him for most part of the movie, it's just this, uh, this little symbolism of all these little critters running around where his stitches broke and he's got a hole and, <clears throat> yeah, a couple of things going on there. So bear with me because I'm going to shade this one up pretty good. I'm going to put in some burlap marks, that kind of thing. But uh, we'll get that going in just a second. I'm going to take a second to read some comments so I don't miss you guys. Appreciate it, Marcel. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> hey, Kevin, you knucklehead. <laughs> so... That's my buddy Kevin P. West. You're talking about a card artist. That dude, <clears throat> he knows his stuff. Him and Jim do awesome work. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, gonna refine this a bit, and then I'm gonna start shading on the actual critter. So uh, get these snakes going. I'm using my five here because this is just a little bit different. Um, this is a darker lead. It's a harder lead. So I wanted to shade in with this one today. And the point on my nine would also be too large for this finite work in between here. You see, I can control it by bumping right up against the line without going over it with this five. Where in most part, uh, if I use the nine, I would tend to scribble across. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to blur those lines. Because when you scribble across, it tends to make them thicker and makes them look watered down or hairy. Because you're putting little slashes on them and you don't want to do that. But, yep, that's the way we're going to do it today, like this right here. So, but uh, yeah, this dude was awesome. He was neon green. And... Uh, I think it was because of a black light effect they did on the show, on the series. or um, Not on the series, but on the movie. And I found it really fascinating the way they lit him. Because Santa Claus was really dark and inverted, so I'm guessing it was a black light kind of thing to, to traumatize Santa. And if you haven't seen this in the 20 years it's been out, spoiler alert. <laughs> you know, so I won't uh, ruin the movie for you. But uh, yeah, this is the bad guy in the movie. And uh, he kidnapped Santa. That's the, the baseline for it. I won't go into heavy details about what happens or anything. But with this being burlap, I'm going to feather this out a little bit to make it look more like fabric and softer than it would left open. And I'm going to use this to... Uh, I may leave this black and white. And just ink it up instead of coloring this one out. I don't know. I've got some really cool colors. And I also have uh, a recommendation from Alfred. He was talking about uh, offline. He was talking about how it would be cool to see this guy glowing green on the card. I have some glow-in-the-dark paint markers that are really, really intense. And I don't use them very often because of the fact that they're <laughs> so intense. That could be an interesting... Um, edging for it. I don't know if I want to color it all the way through or not, but it could be an interesting look. But, I mean, if you turn those suckers, if you turn, it, what it is, if you use these paint markers, um, they're like 
I don't know. I don't have them over here. They're at the other table. But um, they're in my other supply desk. But uh, anyway, if you use them, they tend to uh, take about, I don't know, three minutes, maybe four, to charge up with under, a, under a lamp, like, you know, just a table lamp or whatever. You put them under direct light, and they charge up. And then as soon as they do, what ends up happening is you can turn out those lights, and they will glow. And I mean, like, light bright, old school, you know, kid function toy glow. And, you know, um, it's just crazy, crazy stuff. I mean, it's it's nuts the way they come across. I did a Slimer a few years ago with them, and that's why I originally got them. And I tell you what, man, they, they are awesome. I did that a couple of Halloweens ago, and they're still in there, and they still – I pull them out and make sure they're not dried up or anything like that. You know, rotate them and shake them like you're supposed to do and whatnot. And – uh they have yet to dry up on me. And normally stuff like that, you know, doesn't last long, hardly at all. But in this particular case, I, I think they're, uh, what brand are they? I think um, they're one of the fabric paint brands. Um, I want to say Artist Loft, but I don't think they are. I, do, I don't think they are. I would have to go look, but I don't want to, you know, walk away to lose that much time on the show here and keep everybody just to look. I'll uh, I'll look and post about it later. I'm not that obsessed with it. <laughs> just keeping conversation. But uh, Now this being burlap, this is what I like to do. I like to do the fabric touches like that. And then, like, right on this edge, kind of go in and show a couple because that's where the highlight would hit the notches of the fabric. And that's where you would see that. And right here on the no the top of the nose, well, where the muzzle, we'll say, because he doesn't really have a nose, you would see a couple of those like that. Just where that light hits. So, this is pretty cool, actually. I'm having a lot of fun with this one. I should have done these sooner. Like I said, it, it's something about these, um, you know, being Tim Burton material in the first place makes it worth it anyway. But uh, you just don't think about this stuff when you're going into comics. You try to stick with the comic theme. But I've crossed over into animation, so this is all good. Doing movies and animation and things like that for the look. And right up under here, I'm kind of going to give that a ridge. To thicken it up because when he crunches up his face all of this comes down and kind of squishes because when he relaxes it goes away <laughs> so the animator had an actual uh, problem with that because you know there was a, a report of an animator arguing with um, Tim Burton over that because they didn't want it to look that way because it made it look scrunched and it lost the form of his head. <clears throat> I like it to look kind of like that because I, I'm doing with this one like I did on the Nightcrawler. I'm trying to make it look like it was, uh, I'm trying to make it look like he's climbing up, you know, like this is a glass plant, a glass pane and, you know, it's another dimension kind of thing. Like with this laying on the purple, it would be like a, a, a window into the other universe, and that's where that's where I've always done these cards from. Is like you're passing the window as the person's there, <clears throat> or the the critter or whatever it is is there, and uh, that's way that that's the way that stuff works, you know. I try to make it look like it's an alternate dimensional window into the other the other world of 
of my nugget where these guys are hanging out. I don't want to get too Freudian with it, but uh, you know that reference works. And in hindsight of saying it, it actually makes a lot of sense because that's where they're at, you know. But here we go, putting in some more fabric lines here. <clears throat> and one cool thing about this guy, he bugged the crap out of me when I watched the movie. And that's a technical term, mind you. But uh, <laughs> he did. He bothered me in the movie. Um, and I thought that movie was great. But uh, for some reason, this character really, really just bothered me. Of course, maybe it's a, it's the fact that I'm a Santa Claus fan, and 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 you know, um, in my house in the holiday season, I'm the guy that does the decorating for the most part, because of the simple fact that I love Christmas for one, and uh, it, it's kind of an obsession for me. I don't have Christmas out all year round, but when Christmas comes around, I'm the first one to, you know, it's Christmas time, kind of like an idiot but whatever. Um, I really dig the holiday for some reason. And I have these. Um, I'm not normally a knick-knack or collectible type of person because I don't want to get... I have an addictive personality and I don't want to get a bunch of that stuff around because then it'll take over you know, my entire world. But I have something along the lines of, I, I think, I don't know, about maybe 70 or 80 Santa Clauses in various shapes and forms, and they're uh, the porcelain figurine type, you know. So I, I've collected them over the years, and that's what I decorated with. <clears throat> a lot of the times I decorated uh, with a lot of those because of the fact that I just love setting them around. Because what, you know, I understand is Christ's birthday and all that, and I'm a religious person. I, I, I'm okay with that. But I am also a hardcore fan of the commercial holiday, and I openly admit that. And if someone has a problem with it, then that that's you know, that's your choice. That's fine. That's cool. I understand. I get it. But I mean, it's it is a religious holiday, and I do celebrate that fact. But um, it is an opportunity to give back that you don't get to during parts of the rest of the year, you know. And I take that to heart because I'm one of those people that loves to give stuff, especially during the holiday season. I mean, I give year-round, not that I want to brag or anything or talk about it too heavy. It's just I, I try to um, I try to do that as much as possible throughout the entire year. And uh, that, that's a big thing for me. And I tend to do that a lot more often than people think I do, <laughs> which is a cool thing because I don't want them to tell, you know, everybody, hey, you know, this dude will give you this or that or the other. Uh, I, that's not what I do it for. I don't do it for the credit. I do it for the fact that it's the right thing to do, and it makes me happy in knowing that I'm at peace for what I do it for. So that's, you know, not to mention the fact that if I can make somebody smile and give them a leg up, you know, hey, Cool deal. More power to it, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, I don't want it to be misinterpreted that I do it because, you know, it's a tax write-off or anything because I don't even claim it on my taxes. I'm not one of those people. I, I don't need to claim it to make it happen. If it's not on your taxes, it didn't happen. Uh. <laughs> I'm not like that. In fact, I'd rather them not know that I did it if I can help it. So. But, love giving out the presents, love seeing the kids, love, you know, making people smile. Now, I really like to to keep the family guessing as well. You know, if you can guess 
uh, <clears throat> what's in the present, then it's kind of, oh, you got me what I wanted. Nah. <laughs> I'm kind of old school. I like people to be surprised. You know, so. It's, you know, it's like comics these days. You know, Diamond was forever telling, you know, this issue of Spider-Man 1,384 is going to be about the 1,384th appearance of Spider-Man, and it's going to be controlling the 2,384th appearance of the Hobgoblin, which he didn't even appear the first thousand times in this book. So, yeah, it's it's always twisted. You know, everybody knows everything, and it's just, I uh, leave some surprise, you know, leave some some elegance and some grace to it. But, uh, and that's why probably I like this movie so much is because of the fact it's an original take, and you can't not enjoy that. I mean, if you look at it from that perspective, you can't really miss it, you know, and that's why kids resonate with this film so much is because of the fact that it's different. Um, you know, that's why everybody loves the Grinch when the Grinch comes on. But that's the reason everybody loves uh, It's a Wonderful Life till this day as well, because of traditional values that aren't necessarily as, as expressed today as most places um, would like them to be, you know especially here stateside, you know, nobody has any respect for anybody anymore. And it's not that they don't, um, it's not that it's a, a hate thing. It's more of a loss of tradition and legacy and habit. You know, people have gotten so jaded with the me factor, they forget that there's other people on the planet unless they've got something that they can give you out of it or get out of it kind of deal. And I know that's a crappy way to be, but it is what it is, and that's the way, you know, people come about it. Maybe one day, you know, we'll we'll come back out of it, and we'll get some values out of it and stuff, and everything will change and grow back up. But uh, I don't foresee that happening for a little bit because of the fact of all the stuff going on right now, you know. It's a crazy world out there. Crazy, crazy world. So that's why I don't get into political stuff and all that. It's not not that I don't follow it, not that I don't pay attention and I'm not in the know. It's just I don't get inundated with all the garbage behind it. Whether it's true or fiction or, you know, made-up news or reality-based, you know, court-worthy <laughs> notifications. It's just crazy stuff, man. I just like to do the simple escape, like watch a good movie like this, especially during the holidays. And since we have one less person to celebrate them with in my family the last couple of years, you know, my great-grandmother passed away, my grandfather passed away on my dad's side, and... Um, my great-grandmother on my mom's side, and then my sister. So, you know, things are a little heavy, but it's all good. This time of year makes me smile. It allows me to do stuff for people. That's probably why I'm so chipper about it. I've never had a bad Christmas, and it's not necessarily all the presents in the world. Because we were a farming family for a lot of years. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of tight, tight, tight years in there. But uh, it is what it is, man. We made the best of it the way you're supposed to. It was always about giving for us anyway. Let's see here. Doing the snake thing. I'm going to leave this open and uh, not color these snakes because I don't want to put uh, funky black marks and whatnot throughout the whole thing. I'm going to leave them open. And you can see where his stitches popped right here. I'm going to put a little shadow in there so we can get that going. And show that. I'm going to make it look like that was a stitched up cut that popped back open. 
kind of thing. There we go. Cool deal. All right. I think we have Oogie Boogie. That came out really well. I'm digging it. I am digging that. Just because of that crunched brow right there. I'm going to add in a couple of cracked lines. For the fabric to get twisted up in there a little bit. There we go. Cool deal. I'm going to leave it right there for you guys. I hope you're having a great Sunday. I know I did today. Uh, did a ton. Got a lot of new stuff out. And got to hang out with you guys for this card. So uh, let's see what uh, let's see what we can do for tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking maybe I don't know. I'll have to look at the sheet and see. Uh, I'm thinking maybe another set for the couple of days of this week and see how we go. But uh, I appreciate it. Anyway, it's getting close to that time of year, man. Be nice as you as you get to the holiday. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. And then move beyond it. As New Year's resolution, step up and do it now, today, and say, hug somebody, smile, you know, tickle a kid, do whatever. But again, I give the warning, make sure it's a kid you know. But um, don't do it to random children. You'll get, <laughs> you'll get yourself into trouble. But um, – you know, do something to make somebody feel good. You know, do something for someone else. Spread the word, spread the love. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy.